House file 2996, uh, Waste Chair Vang has a uh, industrial hemp ec extract food ad additives authorized. Uh, Waste Chair Vang, you have uh, 2996 on industrial hemp and extra food extract food additives. We have about 20 minutes blocked for this bill, although the bill does have a fiscal impact. The fiscal note indicated on an, in, an impact on the uh, Office of Administrative Hearings. So it will need to also make a stop in state government finance. We ask that they return the bill after they've heard it. Vice Chair Vang, please move your bill and begin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move uh, House File 2996 be recommended to be referred to the Committee on State Government Finance. Uh, once again, thanks, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, this bill seeks to assist Minnesota's hemp industry by designating industrial hemp extract as an approved food additive subject to regulation by state and local law. Uh, this legislation is an effort to provide Minnesota hemp producers and businesses some needed regulatory certainty regarding hemp derived food and beverage products, including those with CBD. It would also provide consumers with confidence that a, a made in Minnesota hemp product meets high regulatory standards, removing confusion in the marketplace and creating a more a level playing field for Minnesota produced hemp products and related businesses. The bill instructs the Department of Ag to develop rules to regulate the production of hemp extract and food containing hemp extract. Uh, this legislation is similar in scope and, and purpose to a 2020 enactment in the state of Virginia. Uh, several states have enacted their own intrastate regulatory mechanism permitting hemp extracts in food and beverage applications, uh, such as Florida, Virginia, New York, and California. Most recently, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania has taken this regulatory path uh, to promote their in-state hemp businesses and products to much success. Uh, Minnesota can also do the same. I also want to note a letter of support from the Minnesota Industrial Hemp Association, Sensible Minnesota, uh, that is a nonprofit that focuses on consumer safety, the Minnesota Hemp Business Coalition, and various stakeholders uh, representing the hemp industry. Uh, Members, thank you for your time and uh, for your flexibility. Um, I also have two testifiers who will speak about their experiences in the hemp industry and this legislation. Thank you, uh, Chair Vang. Uh, is there uh, John Dugas uh, from Superior Molecular? Molecular, uh, please. Pre uh, present. Can you identify yourself for the record and proceed with your testimony? Yep, I, my name is John Dugas and I'm the founder of Superior Molecular. Uh, good afternoon, chairman and committee members. Um, so my name is John Dugas and I founded <clears throat> Superior Molecular, which was a licensed industrial hemp processor and extraction lab in White Bear Lake, Minnesota. I'm here today to lend my support for HF 2996 to authorize hemp extract for limited use in food and beverage applications as determined by the MBA through the rulemaking process. Four years ago, I became inspired by stories concerning the lack of quality processing and outlets for growers in the industrial hemp industry of Minnesota. This inspired me to start a business that became Superior Molecular, which creates superior molecules for the industrial hemp industry. At this time, the Department of Agriculture stressed there was an essential need for businesses like mine that could bring value-added products to the industry and provide an outlet for farmers. Over two years ago, we were approached by several large beverage companies asking about the efficacy of emulsifying cannabidiol or CBD hemp extract for the purpose of creating craft beverages. Not only did we find it was possible, it became a core foundation for our business. We have observed massive shifts in the craft beverage industry on the national and local level, and our value added product was poised to accommodate that shift. What has become clear over the past eight months is that while the product ingredient we produced was compliant with applicable Minnesota agricultural rules in the 2018 Farm Bill, our beverage customers and partners could not use this product to manufacture a beverage or food item within the state of Minnesota. Subsequently, our customers received cease and desist letters or other letters of dissent from the Department of Agriculture. They were forced to cease production and their products were subsequently removed from the shelves and all projects were paused. Our customers complied with state orders only to discover that their version of a hemp extract beverage had been replaced by one from an out-of-state manufacturer 
which to our knowledge is available today on shelves at various big name grocery stores across Minnesota, receiving little to no enforcement action. It is our belief that if anybody should have the privilege of exploring non-alcoholic infused beverages, it would be our tightly inspected and regulated craft beverage industry. I cannot stress enough the severity of the damage incurred to our struggling hep economy due to these actions. Like any other agricultural crop, it all begins with the farmer and it's simple. If we can't sell our value added product, we can't buy hemp crops from many of the wonderful local small town family run hemp cultivation operations. If the state intends on ceding this economic activity to companies outside of our borders and destroying the revenue channel for Minnesota's hemp businesses, then it will surely keep moving in the current direction, maintaining the status quo. However, if the state's intentions are for the Minnesotans to benefit from the cultivation, production, and value-added nature of its hemp businesses, then I implore you to seek reason surrounding CBD and its regulation. HF 2996 is a step in the right direction to develop meaningful and reasonable regulations, which in turn will build consumer confidence in the safety and legitimacy of these products. The Minnesota hemp industry is at a regulatory crossroads. Markets greatly matter, and I ask for your support for this policy to change and provide clarity for Minnesota hemp businesses and consumers alike. The practical effect of current law surrounding CBD in Minnesota and Minnesota hemp businesses must stand on the sidelines while businesses in other states reap the rewards at our expense. Thank you so much to Representative Vang for your courage to tackle such an important issue for our industry. We greatly appreciate the hard work you're doing. And we are committed to working with legislators and other interested parties and the department to rectify the situation moving forward. I encourage the committee to look favorably upon this legislation in order to assist our industrial hemp industry in Minnesota. We need your help. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And this concludes my remarks. Thank you, Mr. Dukas. Uh, next up, we have Bleacher Vial on the court. Uh, as close as I'm going to get. Uh, please uh, pronounce your name correctly for the record and continue with your uh, testimony. Mr. Chair, sorry to interrupt. Um, he is not on the call. Okay. Well, uh, I understand this bill is going to be returned to us uh, after it goes to uh, government ops. So uh, any questions to the author or the uh, sole testifier? Representative Anderson, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I assume that I pushed the right button. Can you hear? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, to the author, I, yeah, I think there's a lot of good points to this bill. I just want to clarify a couple of things. Um, your bill on line uh, 118 and 117 uh, is specific to mention state and local law. And yet a lot of foods or most foods in this country are regulated by the FDA on the federal level. So how do you um, totally basically skip FDA when we're talking about food additives when you want to make this bill law here in Minnesota? Chair Bank, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Representative Anderson. That is an excellent question. Um, you know, many uh, of our stakeholders were, were definitely love more clarity from the FDA, but the reality is they've been silent on um, regulation of, of this uh, portion of, of the hemp industry. Um, and so, uh, you know, we know that consumer demand is not changing and it's increasing, and we need a regulatory body, and FDA has not. Um, than there to develop regulations. And so uh, therefore, um, you know, it's up to us at the state to, to look at those regulations. Chair Anderson, or Representative Anderson, anything further? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. Just another follow-up. Um, you specifically mentioned uh, intrastate uh, commerce uh, when you mentioned the bill, and yet your testifier talked about interstate commerce. It's puzzling how other states can come across our borders and, and uh, I don't mean to say dump, but sell their products in, in Minnesota when we can't even have our own processors sell products here. Why has why that uh, been happening and to what extent? Chair Bang, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess I can have my testifier elaborate this if, if they're able to answer this question. Uh, Representative Anderson, um, you know, I'm open up for uh, to amending the language to give more clarity on, on this issue. Um, you know, interstate, interstate commerce is not my field of expertise. And so if you have any 
uh, amendments or uh, language that you think that will be helpful to providing clarity, I'm open to that. No, I'm just concerned about why other states can come into our state and sell their products in the past. Um, it doesn't seem fair, and I, I totally agree with your testifier, Mr. Dugas, that that, that doesn't seem right. That's, that's correct, Mr. Chair. Um, and this is why this is bill is, is there to make sure that we can provide that regulation um, and that we're not the ones who are uh, stopping our Minnesota-owned hemp industries from uh, thriving in, in the state. Uh, thank you. We also have uh, uh, department professionals uh, on tap here. If they want to weigh in on this, uh, now would be the time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you see me okay? Yes, Andrea Vavo, please. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, for the record, my name is Andrea Vavo. I serve as Deputy Commissioner at the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Thank you so much. Just to um, answer the question uh, Representative Anderson brought up, um, it is illegal to sell, so it doesn't matter where the product comes from. Um, it's the product that we care about. So um, we would love the resources to be able to go after all of the products that come through that are illegal, but we do not have the resources to do so. So I just want to clarify that we're not going after Minnesota businesses specifically. It's the products that we go after, uh, whether it's um, from, from the state or another state. Thank you. Anything further, Representative Anderson? You're on mute again. Yeah, Mr. Chair, yeah, that's a little surprising that um, it is illegal for other states, other companies from out of state to come in here and sell our products. So I think there needs to be some some clarifications made. And yeah, I think this bill is a good start on, on Minnesota um, companies and products, but uh, maybe additional uh, enforcement of out-of-state companies would be in order because um, we certainly would want to favor our in-state uh, companies as well in this. So that's uh, that's what I have to say. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Chair Bang, uh, I guess that wraps up the questions and, uh, for right now. Would you like to renew your motion? I'll move, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, Bang, Chair Vang uh, renews her motion that uh, House File 2996 be recommended to be referred to the Committee on State Government Finance. Mr. Uh, Chair, excuse me. Excuse uh, Representative me. Thompson has his hand oh, up. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I did not see that. Uh, uh, Representative Thompson, please. I was just curious what Minnesota companies offer this uh, product and if there are any African American. Uh, companies that would benefit from this product, um, and so I was just—I was just curious if there was if there was something that, uh, that uh, Representative Vang knew about. Uh, Chair Vang, any comments on that? Uh, Representative, thank you, Mr. Chair, and Representative Thompson for your question. Uh, I think there are companies uh, that are from BIPOC communities and. Uh, speaking from my own community, I know that uh, from uh, the farming uh, producers to those interested in, um, you know, hemp is an indigenous plant uh, to the Hmong community. And uh, that is something that uh, we have used back in the old land. Um, and so, you know, I, hemp is beneficial to all communities, uh, regardless, uh, and it's have a long standing history in, in um, you know, BIPOC communities too, I believe. Hey, Chair, Thompson. Chair uh, with all due respect, uh, the B in BIPOC always missed the mark. And so, again, I ask about African American organizations because the, the African American organizations, I, I don't know many of them, but when we talk, when we put people in this group, BIPOC, right, the B is always missed the mark in BIPOC. We don't get our fair share of funds that come out of the state. And so, that's why I specifically asked about African American organizations. Okay, but quite possibly uh, we could have uh, more detailed information forwarded to you, uh, Representative Thompson, or uh, uh, possibly uh, Chair Bang would be able to give a more detailed uh, answer on that uh, when we hear this bill again. Thank you, Chair. Any further questions uh, for the author or the testifier? 
Okay, the, that motion has been renewed. Uh, the motion is before us. Mr. Smith, please take the roll. Chair Sundin. Aye. Sundin votes aye. Vice Chair Vang. Aye. Vang votes aye. Representative Anderson. Anderson votes aye. Anderson votes aye. Representative Burkle. Burkle votes aye. Burkle votes aye. Representative Eklund. Aye. Eklund votes aye. Representative Hansen R. Hansen R. Aye. Hansen R. Aye. Representative Hansen J. Hansen J. Aye. Hansen J. Votes aye. Representative Cleavorn. Cleavorn aye. Cleavorn votes aye. Representative Lippert. Lippert aye. Lippert votes aye. Representative Lewick. Lewick votes aye. Lewick votes aye. Representative Miller. Miller aye. Miller votes aye. Representative Nelson. Nelson aye. Nelson votes aye. Representative Thompson. Thompson aye. 13 ayes and zero nays, Mr. Chair. Okay, there will be 13 ayes and zero nays. A motion prevails in House File 2996 is on its way to state government finance.